So, so I'm actually now going to ask uh, Graham Botham from Network Rail to um, give us an update on where we are with the development work on the, on the central section. We're really pleased now that um, Network Rail have taken on board the, um, the, uh, the, under, the, the work of developing uh, a route towards Cambridge. Um, we're working very closely together and look forward to hearing what you have to say, Graham. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so, um, at least no one's put me on the spot for where's the line on a map. Okay. Which, is, which is what usually happens when I get into one of these discussions, and I'm sure somebody will try and do the yet. So, um, I have to say it's a pleasure. Um, it um, doesn't seem actually that long ago since we were, um, we were talking actually in, uh, in Buckingham about how we take this forwards. Um, and then we began working with the consortium and um, employing Atkins on your behalf to actually work out what was um, the economic case. And, and it is great, because... Um, actually, that work has demonstrated um, there is a clear economic case. And, and we're pleased to have been able to work with you um, to demonstrate that and to look at how that pulls into um, the whole line of, of, of how does the railway facilitate economic growth. Because it is, it is actually quite clear from the Atkins work that um, there is a very significant GVA benefit, not just the normal transport benefits that you might get from a more traditional transport scheme, but actually one that's about the economy, one that's about connecting um, businesses to businesses, that's about connecting people to jobs, um, and that comes over very, very strongly um, in the analysis, um, and about getting people access to international markets, um, whether that be freight or whether that be passenger. So, so where's that gone to? Well, it, it, it's actually produced some of these things called conditional outputs, which is a great term. What's a conditional output? It's, it's, it's something that the evidence says a service the evidence says should exist. So it starts with services, but it's subject to as finding a value for money way to do things. So it lets us begin to start working out what a train service should look like to only then get us into what might the infrastructure look like. And the work, the work identifies um, a large number of places where the the benefits assessment says there is either a very high or a high case for providing transport links and by, by train. And that actually gives us the key starting point because that's the key starting point that gets us into um, our piece of work, which is in um, phase two of this work. We've called it phase one and phase two. Um, phase one was led by the consortium supported by Network Rail. In phase two, was the, as the slide describes, this is led by Network Rail, working with the consortium, working with the rail industry, many of, um, many of our partners in the room, in the room today, um, the local enterprise partnerships, and the whole range of, of stakeholders, and not least, funders. Um, so this now lets us get into the piece of work that says, so, for those services, um, what are the options in terms of how we might do those, whether that be using the existing infrastructure um, or whether that might be by building some, th some new things. Now, this is then reported as part of the what we call the industry's long-term planning process. What does that really mean? Well, it means it's a process that's designed to come forward with choices um, for funders, but not least government, for the next funding round, it also means that this gets published in the standard industry planning documents. So we will start seeing references to East West Rail Central section appearing in our route studies. Um, the first one that we'll see it in is our East Midlands route study, um, and they all, those all come out as drafts for consultation. So that means that a whole range of stakeholders um, including the ones like yourselves that we've worked with developing these proposals, get the chance to comment and make sure we've got the case nailed in those, in those documents and in developing those strategies. So, what have we actually done? Um, work's really, work really, really has begun, and there's um, a number of you in the room who've been, who thankfully have been part of doing this. So, we've already together pulled together all the key journey opportunities and we started to group them to a range of 
not lines of route, but broad corridors, and a broad corridor might be, um, might be 10 miles wide. But those broad corridors, and then we've assessed them. So we generated about 20 corridors, um, including corridors that use the existing railway. Um, and I think we all know that for this part of the world, quite what convoluted journeys um, that produces. But it's done for a reason. It's done for a reason so that at a later point, when somebody asks a question, when we're in front of a planning inquiry, can we answer it? We'll have the evidence to answer it. And we've now distilled those, those 20 corridors um, down to seven. And it's those seven that we are now working through. And we're doing very high-level work to try and reduce those further. Now, those are wide routes. They're very much lot, not lines of route. If anybody asks me, can I draw a line on a map, the honest answer is I actually can't. Um, I think lots of people can, but actually the evidence doesn't take us there yet. And it's that evidence base that's really going to help us with some of the... Um, with some of the difficult choices. So, um, where are we going? Well, um, we have a th we have a, we have a couple of phases to the work that we're the work that we're doing, and this work is is aimed, as as Julian said, at getting to a um, getting to a preferred route option. Um, and there are some significant challenges in that. This is no mean piece of work. Um, but our first, our first challenge is to get us from our seven corridors um, down to three, ideally, and starting to get some precise, which will then start us to be able to start looking at precise routings. But for each of those seven, we're looking at service levels. So again, we start with, what are the train services? Um, infrastructure doesn't deliver any of the economic growth. Trains do that by moving people around. So we start back with the trains. Only then do we look at what the infrastructure might be to provide that. And then we begin to estimate the costs. And we'll estimate the costs both of the infrastructure, what that might cost, and of actually operating the services, which lets us then move to the next step, which is the economic appraisal. So then, does this represent value for money and a choice? Then we can go into the process of beginning to winnow that down. And that's actually where the next phases come in. Um, so our aim, our aim is to get to the point where when we need to provide a choice for funders for what they wish to invest in for the next big funding round of railway investment, which is um, in our current process from 2019 to 2024, that we're able to provide an option for an east-west rail link central section that provides train services that really, really do benefit the economy of the UK. That is no, that is no small task, um, but hopefully, as you can see, it's one that we're entirely up for. Thank you. So thanks, Graham. As I, as I was saying, Graham's quite rightly warned us not to draw lines on maps. And I, I cannot tell you how many times people phone me up and say, have you thought about this route? Have you thought about that route? I'm pleased to say now that with the work that Graham's doing, we can quite rightly avoid answering those questions because we must look at these corridors first and get down to some sensible sort of um, two or three corridors where we can start doing some really detailed economic analysis and finding out then once hopefully we've got down to a preferred corridor, perhaps one or two, we can then actually start drawing some lines on maps. I'm really looking forward to. Good.